Hey everybody and welcome back to this week's edition of This Woman Can. I am your host Janice Sutherland. I'd like to say career strategist for the mature black woman but it's more about that. It's more about life for the black woman and my guest this week is Dr Kimani Norrington-Sands also known as Dr Kimani. She's a licensed clinical psychologist in California And as a Spelman College alumna, Dr. Kimani focuses on supporting individual and collective healing so that clients can have can live a fulfilled life. Dr. Kimani draws upon her own healing journey, as well as professional work to provide a range of services and products, including the Manifest Healing Job Coaching Program for black women who are interested in developing a plan to leave toxic jobs. That is so important. And Butterfly Landing, which is a book that focuses on the healing journey of a black girl who has experienced sexual abuse, which is available on Amazon. And we had met more when I was a guest on her podcast and we just had a connection. We just had a connection. And then I discovered she was in the age bracket that women I like to talk to. Go figure. Um, And so we struck it up from there. So, Dr. Kimani, welcome to This Woman Can. Thank Thank you for joining us. And a little bit more about where you got to where you are today. Yes, yes, yes. Well, first, I just want to say I'm happy to be here. And Janice, you know, we were talking about um, how popular the video is that you did on my channel, which is Lifting Us Recline Consulting Wellness Services, because we were speaking specifically to Black women over 50. And I think a lot of times, I'm 52, that a lot of times people just ignore us, right? And we kind of just feel like people are not talking to us. So I appreciate that you have a space for Black women over 50. That's the first thing. And then how I got to to this space is that I'm a toxic job survivor. And that is really what sparked me to create the YouTube channel. So as I was going through my own healing journey, I was actually in Stephanie Perry's YouTube uh, challenge. And I was telling her about, this is the topic I want to talk about, Black Mm. women healing from toxic jobs. And she said, girl, do it. There's so many people out here who need to hear that information. And I really started from there. And so part of it was my own healing. So just to talk about it, talk about it, because I knew that part of what they were doing to me at that toxic job is that they were trying to silence me and humiliate me. And so I just got louder, right? So I started talking on YouTube, right? So you won't silence me, I'll get louder. And the more I started talking on YouTube, the more Black women started reaching out to me. And then that's kind of sparked this, this fire. To just keep talking and to keep help keeping at keep helping as many black women as I can to leave and heal from toxic jobs because it can be devastating and very harmful, traumatic. Mm. Um, But I want to let black women know you can heal, you can get out, and you have options. Fabulous, fabulous, fabulous. And it's funny you say that because a lot of the clients I end up speaking with. The reason they are where they are is because sometimes of that those toxic environments yep. and people underestimate, I think, underestimate the impact, the longevity of the yep. impact of those, yes. those of those in of those environments. I appreciate you said the longevity, Janice, yeah. because, you know, I resigned over a year ago, but I'm still healing. Yeah. And so I think it's important to not only talk about it, but to be very transparent mm. That when we get hurt, so as Black women, we get hurt, Mm -hmm. right? But part of the social messaging for Black women around the world is that we keep going, we fight, we don't let them see us get, you know, knocked down, all these different things. But it's denying our own humanity, that we are harmed Mm -hmm. and we have every right to feel what we feel, even anger. But Mm -hmm. then as Black women, we think, oh, I don't want to be the angry Black woman and all these other things. So I try to talk to Black women about Connect to your emotion. You have every right to feel what you feel. And how do you get that toxicity out of your system, right? Because if it festers, it gets turned into a depression and that's not yeah. healthy for us. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for that. So talking about, you you said you left, what, just a, a year ago? Over a year ago. Over a year ago. ago. Oh, just over over a year, a year ago. Over a year ago. Yeah. So during that transition, so you left a well a, a well-paying job all yes. that kind of thing with so-called so, good benefits good benefits the good job we we all know yes. we all know that 
But right. what what was the greatest challenge for you? I think making that making that move, that transition out of the corporate for perspective to being entrepreneur, being an entrepreneur. Yes, 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 yes. So the biggest issue was fear. So the fear of leaving, the fear of what is going to happen if I leave this job. Will I? How am I going to pay bills? What's yes. going to happen? All yeah. those fears, right? And so, Janice, what I've done is because I, again, my YouTube channel really was birthed from my own healing journey. And so I said, you know what? I wonder if other Black women are experiencing this fear. And what I've noticed, because I'm a psychologist, so I have a lot of Black women clients, a lot of them talk about that, that they stay at the toxic job because of the fears about yes. money yeah. and their benefits and all that, right? And then the more I started talking about it, I was like, oh my God. More and more and more Black women have said mm -hmm. to me, and I even did a poll on LinkedIn, they said the mm -hmm. only reason they stay at that toxic job is because of finances. So what I said was, okay, how do I help you? Yeah. How do I give you the practical tips yeah. or strategies to help you get out? So I partnered with a Black woman financial psychologist who actually I worked with to help okay. me get my money together so I can <laughs> get out. So I'm partnering with her. So we're doing a masterclass called get your money right so you can leave that toxic job. This is a financial class for Black women. Um, so I'm excited to do that because, again, I feel like we're confronting the fear, right? The fear is mm -hmm. there about leaving. We're confronting the fear about finances to help you actually get a financial plan. So once you leave the master class, you have your financial plan. Mm -hmm. You'll learn about how to replace your income. You can learn about health benefits, the so-called benefits, yeah, how yeah. to get them for yourself how to start your own business, right? How to think about the talents that you have currently at that job or maybe that you had somewhere else, how you can actually make money yeah. doing something else, yeah. another job, or if you want to work for yourself. So again, that was part of my journey. I was like, okay, fear, that's what kept mm -hmm. me there, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to liberate as many Black women as I can, right? <laughs> so if fear is the issue, then let's address the fear, come yeah. up with a financial plan so you can go, so yeah. you can heal because you can't heal when you're getting beat down every day. Very much, very much, very much. Thank you so much for that. So you talked about that be, being your biggest fear and that was the biggest yeah. challenge for you. But yes. come on, what the, well, I always think there's a positive. So, but what's the best thing about making this mid-career change or changing careers at this stage of life? There's so many best things, right? <laughs> so number one is that I don't wake up every day in dread. Mm. I wake up every day like, okay, what am I going to do today? And knowing that today is my day and that I can decide what I want to do and I'm not under attack all day. Mm. That is the absolute best part of this process. And knowing that because I have, done something that was extremely scary to me in terms yeah. of resigning and speaking about my healing journey that I'm helping other black women. And that fills my soul to know that I'm helping other black women to leave and to know that they have options. And the other thing, Janice, is to know they're not alone. Yeah. So many of us yes. are suffering in silence, yes. in toxic jobs. And when I talk about, you know, Sunday, 5 p.m., I was like mortified. I just felt this is a dread that I had to go back to that toxic job. Black women are like, oh my God, that was me. Are you in my head? Mm -hmm. And so that that is that is very fulfilling to yeah. know that by me speaking my truth and refusing to be silenced, that I'm helping other Black women to liberate themselves as well. Fabulous, fabulous. And you're so right. I call it the me, myself and I syndrome where we think we're the only person going through it. Nobody else understand. Nobody else experienced it. There's nobody else I can talk to. It's only just me, yes. myself, and I here. That yes, really is really yes. you know, but as you said, you invariably you tap the shoulder of a woman next to you. Yeah. Um, they've been through it. And I sometimes tell my clients, you're not that special, you know, because <laughs> in the nicest possible way, because yes. you know, other numerous other women have been through that, have faced what you have and come out the other side. Absolutely. And yeah. to know that on the other side, it's so much better. Yeah. And so a woman actually contacted me. She said, um, can you give tips about how to deal with the fear? Mm -hmm. And there's no magic pill. There's nothing yeah. I can say to you 
that will make the fear go away. You're going to feel the fear. And so yeah. I'm very transparent about that. It's it's fearful, it's scary, it's yeah. it's painful, it's all those things. Yeah. But you have to go through it. That's the only way through it is to go through it, right? Yeah. Yeah. And the longer yeah. that we avoid it because we're fearful, the worse it is because now we start beating ourselves up. Yeah. Oh man, I wish I would have left, right? Yeah. But we just have to confront the fear. And so that's why the master class, so I'm gonna come out with a series of master classes <laughs> to help black women confront their fears, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I want to give them the actual tools and the strategies. Yeah. This is what you need to do Fantastic. so that you can walk through the fear and yeah. still come out very well. You can leave the job and you won't be homeless because yeah. we jump to the worst case scenario. If I leave, I'm going to be homeless. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No. But but I also find that the, sometimes I find that the, fin- the financial is sometimes the easy excuse to tell ourselves ah. because sometimes it's not just about who am if I don't have this position this job this role this title I've worked to work for who am I yes yeah Um, my parents paid for me to go through college went to this hardship blah 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 if I don't do that what will they think yes what will people think about me giving up this job so there's lots there's, there is so many, yeah. it's very complex, right? Yeah. And yeah. then just to think about as black women, how typically we have to work twice as hard to get half as much. Yeah. So we've been told that the whole time. So we out there working, 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 yeah. right? Our parents, our family is supporting us, right? Yeah. And then we get to that point. First of all, we might not get to that point because yes. the stress might kill us, yes. right? Yes. We may develop diseases and all research is out there about that. Okay. I talk about that on my YouTube channel, but a lot of times when we get there, you are constantly looking behind your back. Mm -hmm. You are not safe when you're Mm -hmm. there because people are trying to take you down Mm -hmm. and you can get there and all those negative experiences, you become very disillusioned. Yeah. Like I did this for this. Yeah. Yeah. And I think (laughs) what's important for us as black women it's to not define ourselves about a job title. A job yeah. is what we do. It's not who we are. Very much, very it's not much. define us, yeah. right? It make, yeah. We make money from it, but it's not who we are. Yeah. And, and I was just having a conversation with another interviewee and we were talking about the fact that think beyond the glass ceiling. Yes. Because when you get there and you've worked all this time to get there and yes. you've worked that hard to get there, as you said, look behind your shoulder, all those kind of things. And yes. you've got there and it's like, Okay, what now? Right. This can't be it, right? Yeah, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Oh God. But we've given we've given some of our best years to getting there and it's not all that it's cracked up to be. No. Um, So but 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 yes, but I digress a little bit. I digress. So Dr. Kamani, knowing what you know now, I know it's still it's still fresh for you to move Uh in this transition, but Uh what do what do you think would have what do you wish you had known when you embarked on making this change? Um, I wish I would have known that I was going to be much better after. Mm. So because of so much fear I had, even though I knew I had to go, even though I was having so many physical, psychological symptoms, all those things. I had a black woman therapist and she was like, girl, if you don't leave, it's going to kill you, Right. Even though all the stuff was happening to me, mm-hmm. I still struggle with the faith. Yeah. And knowing that once I left, life would be so much better for me, that God mm-hmm. would provide for me in abundance. Yeah. Right. And so once I left, Janice, so many opportunities have come my way that I never could have thought about. People are seeking me out. So many things are coming my way, but I couldn't see it when I was. Yeah dealing with that abuse at that yeah. job. Yeah. And so that's the one thing that I still have to practice self-forgiveness of myself because sometimes I'm thinking, why did you stay there so long? Yeah. Why did you let those people treat you like that? Yes. Right. Yeah. But I have to say, you know what? You were in the best, you did the best that you could at that time. Yeah. You were yeah. trying to survive. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But I just wish that I had a little bit more faith in myself that I was able to see within myself what other people could see because mm-hmm. other people would come up to me, Janice at the job and they would say, um, you know, I don't really see you working here too long. 
Like I, I see you doing something much bigger. I don't I don't see you here, right? So I used to work for a school district. So I worked for the second largest school district in the in United States, right? Yeah. And they would say, Yeah, I don't this does not seem like the place for you. And Janice, that would annoy me. <laughs> when people would say that, it annoyed me because I'm thinking, are you saying I don't belong here, right? Mm -hmm. um, no, I'm here to fight for the rights of Black children. No, this is my, yeah, this is my yeah. mission, right? Yeah. But they saw something in me that I could not see for myself. And, and, I, and I love that. Let me to explore that a little bit more. What do you think, or why do you think you couldn't see in yourself, what others could see in you. Yes, I think that because my value of I like predictability, I like structure. Like I like knowing that the fifth of every month I was getting a paycheck, right? I like knowing that I had certain health benefits for our family. I like that degree of structure in terms of what the mm. job mm. provided for me. Number one, number two, I lied to myself many times when I was at the job. I lied to myself like, okay, well, that might happen to that. that they might have done that, but I'm going to fight them. Like mm -hmm. I'm going to get around it. And I would mm -hmm. say to myself and lie to myself that I was the Harriet Tubman at the job. So I would say, well, you are helping Black families and kids and staff, yeah. you know, on an underground railroad yeah, and you're doing, yeah. right? And people would even call me Harriet, Right. And that was the lie to myself. Like, why would I want to be in a work environment yeah. where I'm known as Harriet? Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So I miss, I, I think a lot of just lying to myself mm -hmm. because I like the predictability and, you know, that sense that I'm a fighter. Like, I'm not going to let you fight. You know, I'm yeah, not going to let yeah. you win. And, yeah, you yeah. know, and then you have people in your circle, sometimes, particularly in the older generation, they'll tell you to fight. Yeah. They'll tell you to stick there. They'll yeah. tell you, don't leave that job. It's a good job, right? Yeah. And so I yeah. kind of bought into all of that. Yeah. So so looking at that now and making that transition, what lessons did you learn and how has it con contributed to, to your greater success? Oh, I like that, Janice. Um, the lessons I learned is that, uh, and let me, let me, okay. The lessons I learned is that I'm dope, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> and that people can see my dopeness. And the reason I, I hesitated when I said that is that as Black women, we have been told to be so humble. We have been told not to be so-called big-headed, right? So literally, when you asked me that question, it was all these filters yeah. going in my head, like, yeah. wait a minute, how are you going to say this, right? Yeah. But that was the biggest lesson. The biggest lesson yeah. is when we recognize our value and our worth, yeah. And we walk out on faith and say, no, I have all these things. I have all these gifts. Yeah. I will do very well. Yeah. That was the biggest lesson. And that I can walk through fear. I can walk yeah. through fear and do so much better. So now I'm betting on myself. Right. Yes. And additional lessons I learned was I have to invest in myself. So mm -hmm. I have to invest in business coaches. I have to invest in classes. I have to invest in all these things so I continue to grow and pay money for it. I got to do that, right? So if, if I really value that within myself, how am I investing in myself? And it's a continuous investment. Mm -hmm. So that was a major lesson too. So there's two things. Both those things you said just excited me. Yes. I ha I've always had a bit of an issue with the word being told I have to be humble. Uh, because I'm like, why do I have to be humble? I've worked bloody hard yes, to get here. You know, absolutely. this isn't me being humble. Why should I almost be grateful? I'm not right. sure you can't practice gratitude, but I worked. I earned this, absolutely. you know, and I think we need to remember that, you know, it wasn't handed to us. It wasn't, you know, where, especially if you're a senior level positions, we know what it took to get there. Absolutely. You know? And I'm not going to They be are not looking out for it. us. We're not going to get over. Like some other groups, now they can get over, right? Yeah. So yeah. They can do mediocre at best and be promoted. Yes. We have to be over yeah. and above yeah. just exceptional to get yes. who we are. Absolutely. And then we're still sending the message, you got to be careful of how you present yourself because people are looking at you. And then like, yeah. 
oh, how did you say that? The tone policing. Yeah, yeah. Too aggressive yeah, yeah. And, and all these other things. But we have to just say, you know what? If that is the environment. So I heard a woman say, and I don't know who said it. She said, and many times Black women, as we go into workplaces, we're told that we have to dim our light, right? Mm. And she said, we are the light. Yes. We are, we are the light. So let us not dim our light. And there's actual research, as, as you saw on LinkedIn, saying that, for Black people, as we um, talk about our accomplishments in the workplace, that we're often dinged. Other groups are encouraged to do that, right? Yes. You have to yeah. promote yourself, right? Yeah. Black yeah. people, we do that, we're dinged. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, 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 yeah. And, and then the second thing you talked about was personal development, personal investment. Yeah. I have, I've always said, I do not... I do not want to be responsible for somebody dictating how far I go on the basis Ooh. that I'm waiting for you to invest in me. If mm. I'm not prepared to invest in myself, come on. Yes. Come on. Now, don't get me wrong. If there's a budget there and you're very adept, I've done it. You can yes. answer the budget because you have to sell it to them as to why they should spend this money on you. But if yes. you're not going to give it to me, I'm not going to say, oh, well, that's my development yes. from the drain. Yes. And that you need to recognize that sometimes you don't know everything. Yes. And when you're stuck, you're like, I don't know. Don't just give up and just be complacent and just stay there. Yeah. And continue yeah. to be abused, whatever. Yeah. Say, okay, I don't know how to get out of here, but I know I need to get out of here. Who do I need to contact? And Janice, I did a video today <laughs> about um, as Black people we need to pay each other for our services. So sometimes as black people, we try to get over on each other. Like, girl, hook me up. Yeah. A girl, get, give give me a sister discount or yeah. give yeah. me a home, right? But we need to pay for our services. So we pay for eyelash extensions and weaves and all these other frivolous things that are not helping you mm -hmm. in your situation. But when it comes down to another black person who is very mm -hmm. does their job very well mm -hmm. right why do we not pay them yeah we have to pay black people for services yeah fabulous definitely definitely hear definitely hear that so if you had to start over from scratch dr kamani knowing what you know now what would you do differently um i would have left much sooner right <laughs> i would have left much 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 sooner right now I did take a leave of absence, which I'm glad I did, right? Mm -hmm. I knew I knew I had to go. I knew I, I was like, I, I'm not ready to leave. I'm not, <laughs> I'm so scared. I, I know I can't mm -hmm. leave right now, but I need a break. I need mm -hmm. to get away, right? Mm -hmm. And so I appreciate doing that. However, I would have left much sooner. I would have also paid attention to signs much sooner in terms of how the job was harming me. Yeah. yeah. I would have not tried to prove my worth to people who were not worthy of me. Um, and I would have just recognized, look at the writing on the wall, mm. look what's happening here. Okay. Mm. I would have recognized there was other black people, particularly black women mm. in our age category, Janice, who mm. were dying mm. at the job. Mm. And getting very sick, cancer, yeah. heart attacks, yeah. strokes, I would have paid attention to that. And the symptoms I was starting to experience yeah. were not good for me. Yes. So that that would be the main thing. If I had to do it all over again, yeah. I would have left much sooner. Yeah. The body has a way of giving you the signals. And when, yes. you, and when you don't, when you ignore them, it'll come back to slap you very, very hard <laughs> yeah. all the way from the back. Exactly. All the way from the back. <laughs> all the way from the back, you know? yes. <laughs> yeah so, and, and, and i'm speaking from experience so yes yes so, so, so definitely yes um one of the things i found that's always been challenging as well when women are looking at making these changes and making these transitions is the conversations they they've been avoiding mm, yeah mm -hmm. so if you had to say the most difficult conversation you had to have about making this transition what would it be I think it was two. One was um, the conversation with myself about addressing my own money trauma yeah. so that I can work through my fears, yeah. right? So I had to go through a lot of, I have worked with a Black business coach, like I've talked to before, 
and therapy. That was the one thing. The second thing is um, being mindful that sometimes people are not going to understand your decision. Yeah. And these could be people you love. Right. Mm -hmm. And my mother did not understand it at all. Yeah. And so wanting to share this with her and wanting her to be a part of the process, she couldn't understand it. Yeah. Very different generation. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And so I had to decide I can no longer tell her this. Yeah. And so I didn't tell her about my process. Mm. And even six months after I left, I still didn't tell her I had resigned. Right. Because I knew she would not understand. Yeah. Yeah. And so I think it's important for us as Black women, look at who's in your circle. Yeah. Look who's supporting you and encouraging you. And if people are telling you to stay somewhere where you're being harmed, mm. then think about what information you want to tell them. Yeah. Okay. No, you are living your own life. Nobody else is living your life. And that that's very difficult, and very painful. Mm -hmm. But sometimes we have to be mindful of who is in our circle and what are they mm. saying to us? Mm. That's, that's a great piece for a great piece of advice. A great, this great piece of advice. So you've did all this, you've done all that, and you talked to all these women. So what do you think holds women back from going for their goal, going for their actual goals? What I think holds well, um, I think it's many, many fears, mm. but I think it's a lot of it too. And we talked about this before is as black women, we've been told to associate our worth with external validation. Yes. And yeah. so if you are feeling insecure and you're constantly seeking external validation yeah. Yeah. and you're working at a job that is abusing you, mm. now you're in a dysfunctional relationship. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. now you're, you're giving your power away. And mm. so I like to tell black women, and I actually heard my friend Colette Elizabeth talk about this, that sometimes as black women, we've been told, you don't walk away, you fight, you don't let people show you, yeah. show yeah. your weakness, whatever, right? Yeah. But sometimes the strongest thing we can do is to walk yes. away. Yes, absolutely. To save ourselves. Yeah. And so yeah. I think all of the social programming that we've been yeah. fed, right? I think a lot of us have a hard time with recognizing that social programming that does not have to define who I am mm -hmm. or what my life can be. And I think it's Black women to say, you know what? I want something different for myself. And I can create that. Yeah. I can do that. Yeah. And I think all of that really yeah. keeps us stuck on top of the fears and all the other things, money and all that other kind of stuff. And, and just, add, just to add to that, Dr. Kamala, I think what we also need to realize is that if we have got this far yes. with all the challenges we've faced, how much further could we go if we didn't have the, those challenges holding us back? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, Absolutely. So and also just to think about, you know, just as a psychologist, you know, part of the work that I do with people, particularly Black women, is look at the evidence, right? Yes. So if you have fears yeah. that, oh, my God, if I leave this job, I'm going to end up homeless, what data confirms that? If, did you get this job? Have yeah. you had other jobs? Yeah. What yeah. makes you think that worst case scenario, you can't get another job yeah. or there's no other way for you to make money. Yeah. So it's important for us to look at the evidence when we start having these very irrational fears sometimes. Yeah. Is this based in just fear yeah. Yeah. or is it reality based? Fabulous, fabulous, fabulous. Yeah. So we're coming down to our last few questions. I know I'm on the clock. Yes. So if you could choose your own mentor, who would it be and why? My own mentor? Yes. Ooh. Um, okay, I, I would say two people. These are two women that I I respect so much, right? And when I say mentor, not in the sense of like profession, but just mm -hmm. their their um determination yeah. and their their uh courageousness in terms of speaking truth. Yeah. And to helping other black people to freedom. So absolutely Harriet Tubman mm -hmm. and Fannie Lou Hamer, right? Okay. So Harriet Tubman in terms of the conductor, right? She tried to reach yeah. out and help as many black women as they black people yeah. as she could to freedom, right? She saw that North Star and she tried to help as many black people to freedom. So absolutely Harriet Tubman. And then Fannie Lou Hamer, because she had a very challenging life. 
Hmm. But she was able to stand up and she was courageous. There were all these things around her that tried to silence her and all these things. But she was audacious. And she was like, you know what? I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. I'm going to do something about it. And that's me, right? <laughs> it's like, if I see something, I'm like, this is wrong. Like, why, why, is, why are people not doing something? And I'm like, oh, I guess it's me, right? Mm-hmm. So it's me, okay? And so now I'm the one who's out here trying to channel as many Black women as I can to help you to freedom, to help you to the North Star. So absolutely, Harriet Tubman and Fannie Lou Hamer. Fabulous, fabulous, fabulous. And you, and you didn't have to think too much for those either. Oh, no. They are my <laughs> heroes. So um, as I said, we're coming down to the last couple of questions. So for women, um, you know, I, I work with women over 50, et cetera. And that's, I'm all about that. So yeah. what do you enjoy most about being 50 plus? Um, I enjoy being honest with myself and being Mm -hmm. okay with being honest with myself and being very selective of who's in my circle and that I'm not here to please anybody. And if you don't like me, oh, well, (laughs) you know, and, you know, just, you know, younger ages, how we're very concerned about how people are going to see me. Who's going to be my, I'm like, you know what, you, I I don't need you in my circle. Right. So people who pour into me and I think having that sense of confidence and Mm -hmm. knowing a greater sense of knowing what I want and a greater sense of saying, what is the life that I want for myself and how do I create it and being courageous enough to create it. So that's, I'm like, you know, and people say to me, you don't look 52. I always say about how we met. Right. Yeah. But, um, I'm like, I love being 52. Like, I don't, you know, some people are like, I don't tell your age. I'm like, why not? Mm. Like, I'm happy to be my age. Mm. I don't look my age and I'm happy Mm. to be my age. Mm. I'm happy that I'm able to um, go through what I've gone through and to continue to grow. I'm continuing to stimulate myself. I'm staying physically active. So I love being my age. Fabulous, fabulous. So my last official question, Dr. Kamani, what does success feel like to you? Success feels like to me to live life on my terms. Mm -hmm. So it looks like being able to wake up and decide what I want to do that day, not somebody else telling me what I need to do, (laughs) what I want to do for myself and to be living a life of abundance, you know, in terms of I'm able to get a personal trainer and mm-hmm. I work out and mm-hmm. I am mindful of what I eat and I do things that bring me joy. Yeah. Right. I surround myself around people who uplift me. Um, I choose the jobs or the work that I want to do when I want to work, what time, how yeah. much I'm going to get paid. Yeah. I decide that. Yeah. So I am able to have, um, true freedom. I remember Nina Simone, um, they asked her about her definition of freedom, right? Mm-hmm. And she said, she talked about the the ability to live your life without shackles and chains. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that is how I'm now living my life. Yeah. Nobody's controlling me. There are no shackles and chains. I don't have to get approval to do anything for my life. So that is just a sign of true success for me. Mm-hmm. Fabulous, fabulous. That was my last official question. Yes. So if people, if women listening want to connect with you, want to know more about what you do, how can they do that, Dr. Kamani? Yes. So one, you can watch my YouTube channel. So Lifting As We Climb Consulting Wellness Services. So I have videos talking about my own healing journey, but I also talk to Black women about this is what you can do to mm-hmm. help yourself get out. Okay. Mm-hmm. So that's the first thing. And that's available to everyone. But then I also have tiers of services. So I have that. I also have a Welcome to Your Queendom Digital Fillable Workbook. And this is for Black women who may be in a toxic job and are so beat down Mm. and disconnected from yourself. You don't even know where to start. (laughs) You're like, I don't even know what to do. (laughs) And so I created this actually for myself. It was a roadmap that I created for myself to get out. And so I have that available. That's on my website as well, liftingusweclimbconsulting.com. And now I'm pivoting to do more masterclasses. Right. So the masterclasses are practical tips, strategies mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. we can give you 
about how to get out. So the first masterclass that I did was um, save yourself, channel your inner Harriet, <laughs> so you can get out that toxic job with your sanity and your coins. So that was yeah. with Emery Archer, who's the anti HR HR lady. Yeah. So she talks to you about severance and all that kind of stuff. So that's available. And then the upcoming masterclass is get your money right so you can leave that toxic job. And this is a black woman financial um, masterclass with a black woman financial psychologist, right? So that's what I'm moving towards in terms of how do I help more black women mm, mm. in terms of practical tips I can give you about how to get out. And then occasionally I will continue to have my black women healing from toxic jobs group. And if you want more individualized attention or support, I do have the one-to-one VIP option. So all of that's available on my website. And if you want a free newsletter, I have a free weekly newsletter as well. So I'll send you the link and people can sign up to be on the weekly newsletter. Excellent. Well, you're going to be busy. You're going to be busy. Yes. Yes. So, but on my uh, terms, Janice. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we've had that discussion. We've had that discussion. Yes. So um, I will let you out the hot seat, Dr. Kimani. Thank you so much for joining me this week on this week's edition of This Woman Can. Thank you. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. Thank you.